Hello, in this module on interviewing skills, we will look at how to face an interview. You have already prepared for an interview, you, ha you know how to prepare for an interview, you know what kind of materials to take with you, you know how to dress up for an interview. Now let us come to the interview proper and look at how does one face an interview. The interviews usually have a three part structure. The first part is the three stages of an interview. The first part is warm up stage. The second part is question and answer stage and the third part is close up. So, let us look at each of these stages turn by one by one. In the first stage is the warm up stage and this is the stage in which you need to make a positive impression. Now, how do you make a positive impression? All the rules we have discussed, we have shared with you on how to use uh, your visual appearance, your body language to make a conf to make appear uh, make yourself appear confident and um, capable. Use all those tricks to make a positive impression. Be alert from the time you arrive. Even small talk is part of the interviewing proce process. Greet the interviewer by name with a smile and direct eye contact. Offer a firm not crushing handshake if the interviewer extends a hand. Do not extend your hand unless the interviewer offers the hand. Take a seat only after the interviewer invites you to sit or has taken his or own, her own seat. Listen for clues about what the interviewer is trying to get you to reveal about yourself and your qualifications. Exhibit positive body language including standing up straight, walking with purpose and sitting up straight. Now, we are going to show you a demo video on how you can do it from the time you enter the room, from the time you prepare for an interview, the way you dress up for an interview, do you enter your room, you take a seat and how you exhibit body language, the things you can do in order to make a positive impression in the warm up stage. Now, in the next stage, we come to the question and answer stage. What do you do in the question and answer stage? The question and answer stage is to show how you can convey your value to an organization. That is the second part. This is the part in which you are going to show your value to an organization. They say uh, again like in presentations, they talk about a four minute rule in, present in interviews that in the first four minutes interviewers make up their minds about you and decide whether they want to hire you or not and how is that decided is the way you walk into a room, it is the way you sit down, it is the way you greet them, it is the way you look at them. So, again on the, uh, from the moment even before you have opened your mouth and uh, after you greet them or you uh, say the first few sentences, the interviewers form a certain impression about about you based on your body language and your um, nonverbal cues. So, watch out for these, watch out for the first few minutes to, to make a very positive impression. Some of us tend to warm up later. Some of us are initially very nervous, but once we get into our groove, we uh, are asked questions related to our knowledge. At that point, we come out quite uh, decently in the interviewer interview, but make sure that you make an impression, make an impact the moment you enter a room and the moment you open a mouth, open your mouth. Uh, now, people uh, guess, people judge you uh, uh, even when they, when they ask you the very first question, ask you to introduce yourself, people have already decided whether they want to hire you, they have already formed a first impression about you. So, during the question and answer stage is the time when people after this initial in impression you have created on the interviewers, this is the stage in which the interviewers want to probe in more depth whether you have the requisite knowledge, you have the requisite skills for the job and do not disappoint them making a first impression is not enough because 
if you are not able to uh, follow that first follow up that first impression by answering the questions in an intelligent fashion it's not going to help you get a job so uh, what how, what do you do in this stage this is the stage where you convey your value to the organization in this stage let the interviewer lead the conversation never ask a quiz question before the interviewer finishes asking it no, never answer a question before the interviewer finishes asking it listen carefully to the interviewer and watch for non verbal sig signals don't limit yourself to simple yes or no answers expand on the answer to show no your knowledge of the company but don't ramble on if you encounter a potentially discriminating question decide how you want to respond before you say anything when you have an opportunity ask questions from the list you have prepared remember that interviewers expect you to ask questions and uh in the next stage is the last stage which is closing on a strong note how do you close on a strong note watch and listen for signs that the interview is about to end quickly evaluate how well you have done and correct any misperceptions the interviewer might have you if you receive an offer and aren't ready to decide it's entirely appropriate to ask for time to think about it don't bring up salary but be prepared to discuss if the interviewer raises the subject end with a warm smile and a handshake and thank everybody in the panel now i'm going to in the rest of this lecture i'm going to focus on the 10 important question which james ins considers the clinching questions most commonly repeated questions in an interview and how you can answer how you can prepare your answers and how you can answer these questions why are interviewers asking you these questions and how best can you answer these questions so as to create the right impact So let's look at the top 10 interview questions listed by James N. The first question is tell me about yourself. This is a very open-ended question. When people ask you tell me about yourself, you can this is an opening for you to ask uh, to take the interview in the direction you wanted to go. So why are the people asking you this question? One is of course they want to know what uh, it's a very broad broad question they are trying to place you depending on how you introduce yourself they are trying to place you they are trying to bracket you who you are they want to know you wh where you stand. So this is and they are hoping it's also an ice breaking question it's a warm up question uh, through using this question they are trying to get you to unwind because mostly people who come for interviews are nervous and this question is often used by interviewers just to give you time to relax and unwind and also to get a an idea about you as a person about you about what you have done it's often that interviewers haven't read your cv so they also buying themselves time by asking you uh, to repeat what is there on your cv or what's not there on your cv but this doesn't mean that you start narrating your life history so you must be very careful when you answering this question this is your cue to take the interview in the direction you want it to go uh, as i said uh, the interview an interview is matching your profile to the profile that the institute or an organization has in mind and Uh, though the interviewers have a certain set questions you can make them depart from these set questions and um lead them guide them in the direction you want them to go to bring out the best in yourself by uh by using these cues which are given by using the space you're given to lead the interview in the direction you want it to go 
So your answer, you have to focus in this question on your major selling points that feature on your CV. Don't have to reel off all the questions. Don't start telling the whole life story. You are not on a psychiatrist's couch. Keep it professional. Keep, don't make it too personal. Besides talking about your career, include some something about your hobbies and interests. And to practice your answer for this well in advance, try to limit it to one minute. Now, the second question is, why have you applied for this vacancy? What is the meaning behind this question? The interviewer is trying to probe whether you understand what the job entails, how well you might match their requirements, and what appeals to you most about the job. So this is what they're tr really trying to find out. And how do you answer this question? This is again a very open-minded question. These are tips which James Ince shares with us, and I'm repeating them where you might be tempted to say so much because it's an open-ended question. So think through your answers to this question in advance. You will be able to remain focused on a key points. Think what is it, wh what you have to demonstrate to the interviewer how you match their rec requirements because you have done your homework well and this way you say you are aware of what your role entails and how you have to match your skills and qualifications to what the role demands and you gear all your answers, this answer to make yourself appear like the best person to discharge the responsibilities which are called for. Now if you've done your research properly, then you'll have a good idea of what the company is looking for. The next question is why have you applied for this vacancy? So uh, sorry, this is already answered. Tell me about yourself. I'm sorry, we are going back for some reason. Let's come to the next question. Now, if you are not a, a fresher and if you are not a new recruit but you have worked elsewhere, you are often asked this question. Why do you leave? Why do you wish to leave your current position? Now, if you have worked in an organization for a certain period of time and you applied for a new position, your new employer obviously wants to know why you wish to leave your current position. Now, the in interviewer is trying to find out your un motivation for changing jobs. They clearly want to know why you want to change jobs, but they also want to know how serious uh, you are about changing jobs. Are you really committed to moving or are you just wasting your time? Now, the reasons for this can be both positive and negative. Your reasons for changing a job can be positive reasons like wanting a greater challenge, wanting to di diversify, seeking greater op opportunities, seeking further advancement, taking a step further up the ladder. It could be when one of these positive reasons. But if you are one of those unfortunate people who want to change jobs for negative reasons because of the problems you had with your boss, uh, problems you've had with the colleague, a uh, financially unstable organization or personal reasons, then it becomes more tricky to answer this question. Because if uh, the reason is positive, it will be easy enough to construct. You can explain to the interviewer what your motivations are and how moving on to your next job will help you to achieve your goals. You are making a positive move for positive reasons and if your reason is negative then the answer is going to be very tricky. The next question is why do you want to work for this organization? The meaning behind this question is the interviewer is analyzing your motivations and probing your expectations of the organization. Why do you want to work for this particular organization? Why not any other? While this question does not directly ask you what you know about the organization, in order to be able to answer it effectively, you are clearly going to have to demonstrate that you have done your homework. Why is this organization so special to you? Why do you want for, to work for this and another organization who offers the same kind of services or who produces the same kind of goods? Why do you want to work for this particular organization? So your answer, if you've done your research properly, you will already be fairly informed as to, how, as to the organization you are applying to join. However, the key to answering this question is how to communicate that knowledge to the interviewer while tying it in 
with why you want to work for them. What are your strengths? Now, this is a very common question, which is a typical stereotype question, which is asked in interviews, where the interviewer asks you to list your strengths. And uh, sometimes it may be a related question, not directly what are your strengths, it may be like, how long do you play to, uh, plan to stay? Would you stay in this job? What are your long term career? No, sorry, sorry. This is the uh, earlier question. What are your strengths is a question where you will answer by saying everyone has their strengths. The key to answering this question is not to rattle off. You do not have to make yourself uh, out to be some kind of genius who is so perfect that uh, you have no flaws and you have achieved everything possible under the earth. You have all the desirable qualities which an interviewer needs. So, instead you should try to, you should be looking at highlighting a small number of specific strengths, discussing each one briefly and most importantly identifying how these strengths relate to the requirements of the job you are applying to undertake. You Mind you, these can be very simple. I rem uh, recall uh, Last year, uh, we had uh, this uh, director of the film Piku, uh, who talked about how he wanted to be, who was sharing his, um, his, uh, his uh, personal uh, story about his, uh, how, he, how he came to start working in films and how he started working. He started out in theater and then he moved on to films. And, uh, when he used to, he, he recalls, he, he recalled that when he wanted to get a job in a theater, he had no acting skills, he had no direction skills, but he really wanted that job. So, when the, in, when the people out there asked him, why did he, what, what were his strengths, what could he do? And he said, he could not think of anything and he could not think of anything uh, which was relevant to the job concern, but he said, I am very good at ironing clothes. Now, who would think that? Uh, a skill like that at ironing clothes can be an asset, but by proving himself to be useful to the actors who needed somebody to do that, he found a foothold in the on stage and we know where it took him, that the rest is history. So, you can even elaborate on one of your strengths by mentioning specific relevant achievement. Choose your strengths carefully. It can be hard to say anything very interesting, for example, about the fact that you are a very meticulous and pay great attention to detail, but there are jobs which require this kind of uh, skills, attention to detail. So, who knows what kind of, so be what I would say if I were in your position was I would not lie, because I have been on both sides as an interviewee and as an interviewer and I find that when someone is trying to highlight their strengths and making up strengths which do not exist or trying to create an ideal kind of CV, an ideal kind of persona for yourself, it does not cut much ice with the interviewers because you cannot substantiate it or because you are fibbing, you are not honest. So, be honest. However, if the recruiter is looking for someone to lead a team, you can mention team leadership as one of your strengths and cite an appropriate example or achievement. What are your weaknesses? This is a related question, related to what are your strengths. Now, no human being is perfect. Even the top leaders in the world, the top CEOs in the world, they all have their flaws. They all have some weaknesses. So, it would be uh, it would be too utopian and idealistic to think that there would be a person or an interviewee who is perfect in every respect and who has no weaknesses at all. So, it is uh, what is the interviewer trying to find out? The interviewer is trying to find out what your key spelling points are and establish whether or not these strengths are relevant to the role they are interviewing yourself. So, this is where you now do not be perturbed by the question or let it throw you off balance. Your answer should be right on the tip of your tongue because we will work on it right now. And can I, uh, you do not have, you do not only have to discuss a professional weakness unless 
the interviewer specifically requests otherwise. Uh, your first thought might be that you are tempted to say, I do not really have any particular weaknesses, but th this is definitely not the answer your interviewer is looking for and is definitely not the answer you should be given the interviewer wants to know that you are able to look at yourself objectively and to criticize yourself wherever ap appropriate. So, if you honestly do not think you ha have any weaknesses, then you risk coming across as very arrogant and if you say so, and nobody wants a perfect candidate anyway. So, you could think of weaknesses which are uh, which are not weaknesses. So, I remember asking some uh, student of mine and uh, what she said was that uh, her mother felt that she always the weakness in her was that she was always pushing herself too hard. Now, this is this pushing herself too hard which was a grouse her parent had against her is not really a weakness because it is this cap capability or this ab ability to push herself hard which got her in IIT and which got her further. So, you could transform your weaknesses into your strengths by saying you are you are very meticulous, you are a perfectionist and things like that which actually say provide a positive impression about you instead of a negative impression. The next question is what has been your greatest achievement in your personal life as well as in your career. Now, the meaning behind this is what are you good at doing, what do you find difficult to do and why and in what areas you need to improve. These can be the alternative questions and what is the meaning, the, what is the interviewer trying to find out? He is trying to find out, identify any weaknesses you might actually, uh, which might actually be detri detrimental to your ability to undertake the role. See how you react when you faced with a somewhat tricky question, assess how aware you are and how your how you define weaknesses. So, this is this is uh, uh, the this is uh, uh, this is what we mean by what your what are your weaknesses. Uh, now, in this question what are what has been your greatest achievement in your personal life as in your career, what is the answer? You will want to make sure that you have thought through this question carefully before the interview and have selected both a key professional achievement as well as a key personal achievement. Cover both bases, try not to go too far, try to pick a recent achievement. If you have achieved included an achievement section in your CV, then this will be a good starting point. What is it that you have achieved? Now, when you say I am sorry, I apologize. Uh, this heading was for uh, the earlier question which is what was your weaknesses and this is uh, this is what the uh, uh, the the slides have got mispasted the question which the interviewer is trying to find out is what your key selling points are what your strengths are so this is the uh, meaning of when the question what are your strengths not of what are your weaknesses and this is this is what the uh, interviewer is trying to find out when he asks you what what are your weaknesses what are you good at doing what do you find difficult to do in what areas you think you need to improve and the interviewer is trying to identify any weaknesses you might have so and also see how you face a tricky question so i'm really sorry about the the mistake in pasting the slide and in this question in achievement, this is your chance to put your best foot forward and demonstrate uh, your qualities, your uh, significant achievements through concrete example. So, you have to be very clear, it can be a very small thing. Now, if you are a very young person, maybe you have not won too many laurels, but it could be a very small achievement like getting your uh, class 12 or your uh, group to work on a project. and. Uh, get them or uh, organize a fest in your college days, it could be something very simple as that. But you must think of what is it that you achieved, maybe a very small thing, what the background and circumstances were and what impact it had on your career life, what was the benefit. 
try to phrase this in such a way for it to be self evident that this would also be a benefit to any prospective employee. So, why are the uh, why are the uh, interviewers asking you to list your achievements? They want to find out that you you are claiming to have some strengths, you are claiming to have some qualities. Can you demonstrate these th through concrete evidence by showing what achievements you have? Through that, they are going to place you. They are going to say, okay, this person is capable of doing this. This is what he achieved. And they also want to see how good you are at assessing your own strengths, what you consider to be your achievements and are you able to gauge your own uh, uh, use what you have done in the past in your future roles. Uh, how do you, where do you see yourself five years time? This is again alternative and related questions are what are your biggest achievements, what are you most proud of, what was your biggest achievement. Uh, what uh, uh, what uh, sorry so if you get this question the interviewer is trying to ask you where do you see yourself in 5 years time the interviewer is trying to ask you uh, what do not be afraid to answer this question, it wants it is a bold question and warrants a bold answer. The interviewer is really putting you on the spot to sell yourself, but do so carefully to avoid coming across as arrogant okay. and um, you your answer should not be yes, lots of people will think they are displaying a great sense of humor by saying doing my job, I would not recommend it. because this makes you come across as very arrogant and aggressive. Avoid being very specific. When you ask this question, I have heard people say, 5 years down the line, I see myself heading this group. 10 years down the line, I see myself as the CEO of the company. Now, what happens? Suppose you do not become the CEO or you do not become the uh, vice president. How would you, uh, do not you think you are predicting something which is unpredictable? I have heard people say even in academics in, in the I am going to publish uh, 6 papers in the next 1 year and mind you in the last 20 years this person has been has not been able to publish 6 papers. So, it sounds like a boast and you have to be very careful do not be specific because if you are not able to achieve those targets it will be very difficult. Uh, it is very difficult for people to know exactly what job they will be doing in 5 years time and so it is very unrealistic to quote a specific uh, job title you are aiming for. Try to present your answer more in terms of what level you hope you, you will have reached, what level of responsibility of autonomy that would be more realistic. Uh, you could say yes in the first, first year I will be in the learner mode, you, so you can be more general more uh, less specific. It is also a good idea to you can phrase your answer to communicate that you hope you will still be with the same organization in 5 years time. Now, uh, the la final question is people ask you can you tell us a little more. Now, this is again a very tricky question because many of us list a lot of things on our CVs. Uh, uh, the, the, the other questions like what makes you what makes you think you are the best candidate for this job? What is the meaning behind this question? The interviewer is trying to, to ask you what is your unique selling point? So, you have put this under your interests and activities, can you tell me a little more about it? Uh, what should you do? First of all, be honest. What they want to know what activities do you enjoy outside work? What are you interested in outside of work? They want to know you as a person. Uh, they are trying to get an insight into your character and personality. They are trying to test how truthful you have been on, uh, on your CV. They are run out of questions and killing, they are killing time. So, besides knowing whether you are actually capable of doing a job, most employers are keen to know what sort of person you are and uh, you would like to be like to work alongside. 
So, employers are generally keen to have a diversity of characters within their team and always looking for someone who can add a new dimension to the team. When nobody has conducted, while nobody has conducted a survey specifically to research this, there is a plenty of anecdotal evidence of recru recruiters to call someone in for an interview purely as a result of what they have included in their CV and interests and activities. Now, what you should mind and uh, watch out for? Uh, in order to create ourselves as very interesting people or in order to create a very uh, attractive persona for ourselves, we often give ourselves activities and interests which we do not really have. And uh, the, we again, I have anecdotal uh, evidence, uh, not realistic evidence, just to impress the employers or interviewees, we put down a whole lot of activities which might not be put possible. So, I recall uh, one of uh, long, long ago of course, um, the one of one of our uh, one of the late one of the young women in our hostel where I was staying in my college uh, won the Miss India title and uh, the interviewers uh, all the magazines made a beeline to interview her. Now, when she was asked to, the typical questions would be, what do you do, what are your hobbies, because they are trying to create a profile for her. And all her friends told her to, they made a list of hobbies for her to, sh uh, to share with the femina journalist and included things like bungee jumping, <laughs> diving, snorkeling, which they might have come across somewhere else for other beauty queens. But in this case, we know that in India, these facilities did not exist at that time. So, do not add activities which are not possible or do not be dishonest. Very often when I am interviewing people, I find people have listed in activities and I find that candidate very interesting because I say, oh wow, this person does this. Uh, but when the moment I question the candidate, I find that the candidate uh, gets cold feet because they have just put it on their CV to sound interesting. They do not really like someone says I love reading or I, 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 I name you ask them to name a book and they do not know what they, they can't mention more than one book or they talk about their interests which sound very exotic and very glamorous, but probe them a little deeper and they are not able to answer those questions. So, always try to answer these questions to uh, be honest even if you have a very boring hobby, but it is something you actually do. So, help the interviewer create a you as a create a profile of you not only as a set of skills and competencies, but as a person, as a human being, as a, a you know real human being who has hobbies, who has interests, so that they can place you. So, with this it is a very simple question and you can give a very simple answer. If you have a hobby that makes for an interest, then it will reflect positively positively on you as an individual. If you mention chess to give, if you mention to chess to give your CV some intellectual cloud, but have not actually played it, then do not ever do it as I said. So, you can also if your passion is for example, football and you also the captain of the local team, then say it. Besides the obvious selling point of football being a team activity, you have immediately communicated your leadership's qualities, your ability to take responsibility for others, your ability to commit yourself to a project. So, with this we conclude how to face an interview, the three parts of an interview, the warm up stage, the question and answer stage and the we come to the close up stage, which is again asking questions.